All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to provide an overview of what we've learned to date around contact tracing in New Hampshire. Since March, we've investigated now just over 8,000 cases of COVID-19, and this has resulted in us interacting with more than 22,000 close contacts who have been identified and named as having had close contact with those individuals. We've been able to maintain a very robust contact tracing operation at the State Health Department and have been able to expand and contract our staff as needed throughout the response. Currently, we have about 110 contact tracers working with us. At the beginning of our response, the primary risk factor for COVID-19 was first international travel and then later domestic travel. Travel as a risk factor, as you can see, has declined as the stay-at-home orders were implemented. When these were then later lifted, we have started to see travel-associated cases increase, but not to the same extent as prior um, to the stay-at-home orders. In particular, we want to emphasize that when you do choose to travel, it's best to avoid public transportation, and then also attending any large events or crowded spaces. <clears throat> Next slide, please. As local community transmission initially increased during the late spring, COVID took hold in our long-term care facilities. And a majority of the people that we were identifying as cases had, had exposure to an outbreak, and that was what their risk factor for COVID-19 was. As these outbreaks came under control through this enhanced infection prevention in the facilities, as well as our very aggressive long-term care facility testing program, fewer outbreaks occurred, and then fewer outbreak-associated cases naturally occurred as well over the summer months. Next slide, please. Currently and over the summer, as people have relaxed their social distancing restrictions, we have continued to identify um, people who come into close contact with a confirmed case. And at this point, this has taken over as our primary risk factor for COVID-19 in New Hampshire. This has always been a significant potential risk factor for COVID-19 in our state because this virus is primarily spread through close contact to someone who has been infected. But the proportion of individuals diagnosed with COVID-19 has increased over time and is holding fairly steady now at about a third of our confirmed cases. Next slide, please. And then lastly, in terms of risk factors, the proportion of people with COVID-19 who have not identified a specific risk factor, one of the ones I've already mentioned, travel, being associated with an outbreak, or being associated with a known case, um, this has increased as people have gone out into the community. So it decreased during the stay-at-home orders and now about 25 to 30 percent of our people um, have, who have COVID-19 have no identified risk factor. And we think this really is representing that community transmission. However, due to our effective personal prevention measures that people are taking, the actual number of people with COVID has not increased. So it's just the proportion of cases um, attributed that have no attributable risk factor um, has increased, but this has not resulted in an actual increase in numbers of cases, as you all know. Uh, next slide. So these 8,000 cases have impacted many institutions in New Hampshire, and in particular, you know, our long-term care facilities have been heavily impacted. More recently, we've seen some cases in colleges and universities, as well as our K through 12 schools being impacted. But you can see from this graphic that correctional facilities and child care centers have had relatively few cases. Despite this increasing number of infections identified in our colleges and universities and K through 12 schools, a lot of this has been attributed to increases in testing and more aggressively testing both staff and students. And we think that this has helped to prevent some introduction of sp or spread in these, f these institutions. And you can see that our statewide percent positive number of cases is very low and at just under 1% of our tests are, are positive. So we're not seeing any outbreaks associated with public settings, as you can see from this slide, such as retail stores um, and services and restaurants. And then my final slide. Great. So over the last several weeks, as people have begun to move about more, our case investigations have become increasingly complex. Um, these, while our case counts remain low, the average number of close contacts to each case has increased, which is what this chart is showing. So currently about uh, five close contacts are identified for every single case. Now sometimes it may be none and sometimes it could be 40 or 50 per case depending on what their activities have been. We know though that the majority of these close contacts are household contacts, about 56 percent. 
Um, and we've had relatively few close contacts identified in workplaces. Just 6% of our close contacts are in workplaces. So this is suggesting that many of our institutional settings, such as the long-term care facilities, but other workplaces as well, have implemented social distancing measures to prevent that close contact. However, close contact is occurring in other settings, including through social interactions with friends and family, and in other group settings that are not work-related. So we're concerned that people may be letting their guard down when they're um, out and about with friends and family or going to other types of social gatherings um, because they have been identified as close contacts in a number of our investigations. You know, we can't regulate the, the settings of backyard barbecues or birthday parties or other types of social gatherings that people come together. So we just want to emphasize that these particular types of events that occur are potentially high risk for COVID-19 transmission and it's incumbent upon all of us to make sure that we're taking our own pers personal responsibility to take those measures of social distancing at these types of events and if you can't social distance then being sure uh, to wear a mask. We also continue to recommend that people avoid large gatherings and then also making sure that you stay home if you're ill and if you are identified as a close contact it's really important that you do quarantine for those 14 days. So thank you all for doing your part to prevent COVID-19 transmission.